At Skahoy, we are proud to be in the partner program for GV Amp, Grass Valley's cloud and on-premise solution for agile media production. And we not only support the audio mixer, mini mixer, and the macro engine, but also the brand new Maverick X multi-ME vision mixer system they made. Today, I'll show you that mapped onto a Skahoy mega panel. And it's a little bit strange sitting here behind this high desk because I feel like a small child. And maybe I am inside. <laughs> but this is supposed to be built into the tabletop of your OB truck or your master control room. And right now, you're getting a backstage view into how this looks underneath. These 15 modules, they are powered over Ethernet with these single cables. So it's really easy. And it's also pretty easy to make that internal construction. You cut a hole, you have some, uh, because they are magnetically mounted onto uh, some nail plates inside. So having this whole construction made is actually pretty nice. And we designed this version of the mega panel to be really compressed. This is called the slim mega panel because the enclosures of all, all these modules, they are designed to sit closely together in the vertical direction. So if you compare them to our normal standalone modules, these are really optimized to become a mega panel. Anyway, modularity is like in the DNA of Skahoy's reactor engine. It means that when you pick one of these to be like the, the master panel of everything, these others can connect to it as guest panels. They are clients of this one, and they will just do what this one tells it to do. So let me see. I think today, uh, this one is driving everything. This is actually the panel connecting to GVAMP, which is online. This is uh, in the cloud. And it is powering everything else that happens on these. So I'm really looking forward to showing that to you. So let's get straight to it. This is a bank number one. This is like ME number one. We have bank number two. We have bank number three. And we have a master key 48, master key 48, and then a transition block. We also have the transition blocks in a right, left, right version. So you have that offset T-bar. We have caught auto keys over here, but let's just pick a few sources for preview and program or preset as it's called in this system. And if you look at the, um, the uh, vision makes a panel that I'm now showing you from the platform itself, you can see that this is following along. So whatever I do on this panel is also happening actually on the uh, banks that are shown on this panel. So there we go. That's uh, really useful. You also see the displays on these panels. Um, showing the same labels. So we're pulling labels out of the system. The first one called feed A. Then I have two inputs, which is actually inheriting the, the source names that are assigned to these. The rest of them has been set up with uh, aliases. So these aliases are read out from GVAMP and put onto the mega panel by Skahoy's reactor engine. Um, for those of you who know how this whole thing is set up, then we can go to the uh, tab here that currently shows you that the Maverick X is set up with 32 inputs. We have three switcher banks, which are the MEs. There are five outputs, there are four keyers, four image sources, wipe sources, etc. So that's the configuration we have. And if we look into sources, this is where I have assigned a number of names. I also had fun putting in some UTF-8 characters. So there, this should say input number one in Japanese, and this is input number one in Chinese. Hopefully that's true and not something else. I don't know if input has multiple meanings in those languages. But anyway, it just shows you that our panels are able to also render the text in international character sets, which is pretty useful as well for international usage. OK, so we can basically select sources. That is pretty straightforward. Up here, we have key selection, or key source selection. So to, uh, to show you that uh, and how that works and how I could select the key, we can enter into the menu of each of these ME rows. And now I can choose between macros that I want to run. I can also choose between keys or emems. And the default is emems. I'll get back to that. But if we go in here, press key, then you see that currently this row is assigned to select the source of key number one. And it is apparently currently input number eight. So if I change over to this one or to this one, now on key number three, the input was three. And I could now assign input number uh, five to that instead. Go back to this one. It's still eight, etc. If I go into the menu and back to emem, then we can explore what the emem is. And it is essentially like a, a storing the state of the ME. So our state is this. Just notice that. This is on the on Kia number uh, Kia one source. It says in the display we have program pre preset, and then um, if I press this button, we will see it recall something else, and that something else has been stored in that. You can use the shift keys 
to store the state of your ME. So it's pretty easy to work with the EMAMs. If I uh, pick the shift key, by the way, then it will also change the sources. So you do have access to more than 22. By the way, if you fancy even more direct access, it is really easy to just add another MK48, which is one of these panels. And then you would have, I think, what is that, like 36 buttons and then um, subtract these two shift keys. So that's 34 for each of the shift key banks you have. So going to this one, we have the first bank of shift and then you even have a second bank of shift. So already here, we have shift one and shift two and you have 66 inputs that you can assign with almost direct access. Okay, but holding down this one turns this into a store version of the same. So this was emem number one that recalled this one. So let's just do something else that we can easily identify uh, like that. And we will now store that in emem number two. So storing that, yes. Okay, let's recall it. So we go back to this one and now we are recalling the thing we just stored. If we operate this row up here, you see on the screen that we are obviously assigning keys and sources, etc., to uh, the second bank. And there we have the third bank up here. So that's also good. So um, actually on that um, software UI, we uh, I think we are able to actually see the assignment of other keys. So if we go into the menu, pick key on this one, we could try to do key two fill and then see if that would be the second row. So yes, their software panel, uh, GV's own software panel, has uh, are using additional indicators to show you key one and key two fill, etc. I want to talk about the transition section. So that's basically, if you look at the lower right corner, there you have keyers and transitions and so on. Right now, I have a number of keyers which are actually turned on and I can cut them on and off by these buttons here. You see that? So that's pretty straightforward. Then you also have enabling these keyers for the next transition that's happening and that's happening on those keys, all right? And then um, if I pick these, you see that I'm basically changing what my transition is going to be. And if I hold down the shift key, I have also additional transitions I can pick. Some of those are not even on their version of the UI, but we have the full range of the transition types built into the system. So um, although we have only eight of them here, you can still assign that yourself if you want. And also the speed of transition is available to you here as a four-way button. So uh, Grass Valley has given you a way to assign the um, the length of a transition. I think it's like 500 milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds, so one second and three seconds. So slow would be three seconds, median would be one and fast would be half a second. And their idea is that your transition speed for auto is defined by this one. Let's pick slow. Maybe we'll see a slow transition here. It feels like I don't know, maybe a second. So it might have been reduced, but at least this one is setting your speed of the transition. That's more or less it for the mega panel. Uh, final thing I want to mention is that the background can also be turned on and off for inclusion with your transitions. Apart from that, it is important that you realize this panel is not just for Grass Valley and Maverick X. It is for any switcher system Skyhoy supports. And that includes Atom from Blackmagic, VMix, TriCaster, Kros from Panasonic. So it's a true universal panel that will just fit perfectly with the functions of the switcher system you have. And that flexibility is really hard to beat. Thanks for watching this video. Please consider to like and subscribe if you appreciate our content and products. We would also love to answer any questions and posting them here in the comment section is not such a bad idea either. So feel free to do that or any of the other social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram or X. A good old fashioned email is also not too bad. So write to sales at or support at and we will be happy to assist you.